This video is something that's been planned for such a long time because there are two videos which are about the worst things on the Azores and then I received a message saying hey why you don't do a video on the best things on the Azores so here we are I didn't really want this to be only my perspective so I asked you guys it was back a few months ago I do have all the answers written down um, in a file in my phone and uh, yeah this is the way how we are going to do this video okay so the first thing um, the weather really it is never too hot or too cold that's something true because the temperature doesn't change that much like what changes in my opinion is the humidity in summer there are more sunny days and the weather is more stable while in winter the temperature doesn't drop that much but it's really humid and it rains a lot so when you combine all these things it might feel that it's a little bit cold sometimes and it's also saying that if you choose your location wisely the humidity is not that bad which is also true because there are kind of microclimates on some places on the island and there is a message about uh, the internet that did you know that Flores Island was the first place in Portugal to get FTTH I have no idea what that means fiber to the home at the moment there are even some places that don't have electricity but have fiber to their doorstep crazy right I didn't know about this and I, I actually don't know what that means uh, the really small airports. For as long as the airport runways are smallish, we have a bottleneck for tourism. This means the number of people that can come to the Azores is limited. I hope this doesn't sound elitist or something like that. I want everyone to be able to visit the place. I just want to limit the number of people that are here at any moment. In the summer it can get extremely crowded and there are days when there is not a single room on the whole island to rent. Um, yeah, that's the same with cars, so if you are planning to come in summer you really need to plan ahead. Actually myself I'm really curious to see how the things on the islands are going to evolve. The countryside a really nice thing about the Azores is that you can hike for a full day and see wonderful places. The message is also saying that there are so many uh, little other roads which you can take to the same spot. And for example, here it says that here in Fayal, which is another island, I don't even go to the caldera using the same road as the tourist. I go by bike from the opposite side, which is a lot better. Then there is a message about uh, the diving. If you like scuba diving or snorkeling, then the Azores are a great place. There is cave diving, wreck diving, wall diving and so on. And we have 21 degrees Celsius water in the summer and reasonable visibility. Terrific visibility in the winter. I don't scuba dive so I cannot compare but if uh, anyone has a personal experience with that I think it would be nice to hear from from you that's an interesting topic you don't need to travel a lot to see something interesting that's true all the islands are relatively small even if you take Sao Miguel I think it takes a maximum of um, an hour and a half to get from one side to the other side but on some parts of the islands there there is no highway the roads are good but you have to kind of go slow because there are a lot of you know curves unique plant and animal species in the world yeah all these things are actually really amazing uh, nature trails you don't get bored at least 10 days if you know what to look for yeah sometimes i receive messages and emails asking what do i think um, how many days uh, you should spend on the island there are a lot of things to do it depends what you are looking for because if you want to come and just check all the touristic spots no hiking just to make like a really quick tour of Sao Miguel then I think you can do it in three days but if you want to come and you want to explore it and you want to hike and you want to go to the thermal spas and you want to try surfing and scuba diving and go whale watching then I think there are things to do for even two weeks if you don't go with the tourist flow you find very private places yeah I see more of you guys have this experience 
uh, best roads and trails to cycling. Especially near Ponta Delgada, I would say the roads for biking are, are amazing. And also because Ponta Delgada is kind of connected to, to Sao Rock with the beach and with everything. So that's like a really cool place. But another place which I really like for biking is that uh, if you don't go to the direction of Sao Rock, but you just go to the other side, you pass the lighthouse and you go a little bit. It's a little bit like uphill. Eventually you end up on a cliff and there are not so many cars also. And the views are amazing. And especially it's very nice for sunset. The volcanoes are a great spot for paragliding. Then whales, flowers all year. That's also like super nice and super true because if you come in the summer and then if you come in the winter, there are different flowers, but basically there are flowers all year around. Uh, religious celebrations. There are so many religious celebrations, especially during uh, spring and summer, I would say. It's a really cool way of how to experience the culture a little bit more. I actually think there are so many amazing things happening on the island all the time and there is a good website where you can see some events which are happening all over the islands. I'm going to attach this website to the description of this video but it's called something like uh, uh, Agenda Azores or Azores Agenda something like this but I'm going to double check. Great people if you give them some time. That's so true. When I moved here and we got the house, our neighbors are amazing. Also just people in the neighborhood, they are extremely nice. They are always bringing over some fruits and whenever I needed help with anything like installing a washing machine or I needed somebody to fix like cables or lights or whatever, they just always brought somebody with them and uh, fixed the things. It was actually so nice. Also, when I moved here, um, one day I just came back home and all the grass in all the garden and yard, it was just cut. Um, yesterday it was raining so much and I was out in the morning, but then I came back home around two in the afternoon. I parked the car, but I left the gate open. It was raining so much. I was just uh, cooking some lunch and my neighbor, I don't know if he was uh, going home, but he just came, he knocked on my kitchen window and he asked me whether he should close uh, the gates or the other day when I went to pick up my university diploma and I just arrived to the university I didn't know if I need anything to pick up the diploma or I just come and pick it up So I was like, okay, I was around the university I go there and we see what they say and I came there and uh, They were just so nice like I didn't even know my students number and I then I just like told them like okay Look, it's not a big deal. I come back tomorrow or some other day. I look for my email I look for my student number and like all the documents you need and they were so nice like they were just like no 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 just wait for a little bit just give us your full name and we are going to look for it also the other day I brought the car for the car check there were some documents which needed to be printed but I only had them in like an electronic format and they were like yeah don't worry we just print it for you and just come back and take your car in the afternoon so I guess it's just this very small things that uh, people do and the way they kind of like treat you and to me it was actually here on the Azores for the first time when I had to start dealing with things such as property taxes and car checks so I had to learn like all these things which you know sometimes it's confusing like when you don't know what's happening and then you just like go to the city hall like oh, well hello but it was always such a good experience because they never let me feel like I'm stupid just because because I don't know how things work. That's something incredible, I would say. And on many places, actually also in Slovakia, the experience you have with these kind of things is not the best and you kind of feel the complete opposite. Of course, I don't want to put like everyone in the same box, but uh, yeah, it happens a lot. Anyway, uh, unique food. I love Portuguese food. If you like fish and seafood and also meat, that's that's an amazing place. No traffic to work, 9 to 5 job, 8.20 I wake up, 5.15 I was at home. Yeah, that's cute. Since the place is not big, then you don't just spend so much time in the traffic and driving home. Coffee being two and a half euros. And then somebody responded to this message that two and a half euros for 
220 grams in supermarket. It's 80 cents in snack bars or coffee shops. If you have a two and a half euro coffee, it's maybe in hotels. One euro beer at snack bars too. Yes, yeah, snack bars are kind of life here. You know, you go there, you can get coffee, you can get the soup, you can get food, you can just like hang out with people. It has a vibe. They are usually kind of local pubs, you know. Relative to other Western countries, the Azores is inexpensive for basics. Beer, wine, beef, fish, bread, potatoes, local vegetables. Taxes are incredibly low. My wife's parents have a smallish two-bedroom, two-bathroom home in a nice-sized plot of land. We have taken over the expenses as my in-laws are now both in their late 80s. When I asked my father-in-law what the property taxes were, he said about 125 euros. I assumed that was monthly, but that was annually. Here in Canada, my property taxes are $4,000. Drivers. Azorian roads are narrow with some tight curves and sharp drop-offs, so touring around them with a little car is amazingly fun. Then there is another comment on the festivals. All summer there are festivals usually centered around a religious theme. Most Azorians are Catholic. Food and music and ceremonies. Horse riding and nature. Uh, ice cream. Oh, somebody said ice cream. I've never had better dairy products than in the Azores. There is a very good restaurant outside of Ponta Delgada. It's called Kai Schwente and they have an amazing cinnamon ice cream over there. I uh, recommend. Anyway, thank you everyone for sharing all your experiences from the Azores. If there is anything else that comes to your mind regarding the best things on the Azores, please let me know. I would love to read about it. And yeah, I had fun reading all the answers and all your observations. And well, maybe see you around sometimes here on the Azores.